Hey guys, I'm Heather from Grounded Approach, and today I'm going to be talking about histamine buckets. So if you've been aware of histamine intolerance or mast cell activation syndrome for a while, you've probably heard of the term histamine bucket. It's kind of a way that alternative practitioners explain our capacity to handle histamine. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining it in detail, what I think the problems are with this, and what I believe to be a more accurate representation of a histamine bucket. Now, this one's going to be really, really good. It's going to help clarify a lot of things. So stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so the idea behind a histamine bucket is that based on genetics, everyone has a different capacity to handle histamine. Your histamine bucket, if you have a big one, you can handle a lot of histamine without having symptoms. And if you have a little one, you really can't handle histamine at all. Basically, when your bucket fills up, it's good, good, good. And once it starts overflowing, that's when you start getting that high histamine symptoms like the, the eczema, the hives, the shortness of breath, the migraine. So in this example, I'm just trying to show what alternative practitioners kind of suggest. Let's say this person's from Germany over here. They're happy because they have a high histamine bucket. They can eat their sauerkraut and their sausages and all that and not have any problems. This person is maybe from a different part of the world. Let's say it's an Eskimo and they have a really small histamine bucket and it's totally based off genetics. So people who use this model of the histamine bucket generally will say your histamine bucket size is fixed. If you have low stress, you have a really good lifestyle, you sleep enough, you eat organic, you know, you avoid preservatives, you take your methylated vitamins. Basically, if you do everything right, you can stretch your histamine bucket a little and prevent it from overflowing. So lifestyle does have a bit of a factor, but it's kind of just managing symptoms. It's not really healing it because you can't just heal something that's genetic, right? We'll get into that. Um, so if you have a really small histamine bucket, sucks, your life's terrible. <laughs> and what you have to do with this model is you have to eat a low histamine diet to manage it. You don't want this bucket overflowing or else you get all these crazy symptoms. So you're gonna have a low histamine diet and we'll just do diet. Um, you need your methylated, which is good, you know, your methylated vitamins. I'm not knocking that. Um, you need to be dependent on low histamine probiotics. You need to have that low histamine diet, um, methylated vitamins, low histamine probiotics, and you probably need to take a DAO enzyme. And all of these things will help to stretch your bucket a little bit. The DAO enzyme is kind of like poking a hole in the bottom so that it fills up less easily. Um, the low histamine probiotic will help your gut and stay low histamine. Um, if you have a low histamine diet, obviously that brings the histamine load down further. Um, so there's things you can do, but like I said, it's really just managing symptoms. And I don't think this is really a great way to go about it personally. Um, a lot of my clients have tried to do kind of this model for years and years, and you never really know how much histamine's in your body because you can't always be managing like stress and exactly how much you're eating. And did you take that methylated supplement and the, the DAO and everything? And it's just really restrictive. And it also keeps you so dependent on all of these supplements. So you know, this is something that can work in managing symptoms, but I don't think it's ideal. Now, this is what I would consider to be a much more accurate representation of histamine intolerance. And I've worked with histamine intolerance clients from all over the world. Um, I've seen so much success in treating mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerance through the GAPS protocol. And if you're new here, I have a whole playlist on histamine intolerance, so you should check that out. But let's get back into it. So what I think is a more accurate representation of the histamine bucket is it's not genetic. These two people, they're still on other sides of the world. They have totally different genetics, but let's say they're both born with um, a small histamine bucket, okay? So they have this small histamine bucket um, that they inherited through their parents and their gut bacteria, because when we're born, we inherit our parents' gut bacteria, if you didn't know. So this person over here, um, they didn't do anything to really help their gut. They continued to eat a standard processed diet, lots of processed food. Um, they took lots of antibiotics, lots of sugar, and so they have an overgrowth of histamine producing yeast and they have holes in their gut lining so their body is chronically overproducing histamine. Um, so they're getting that histamine from everywhere and so that 5% that might be in their diet is way more than enough to constantly be filling and overflowing the bucket. So their bucket is low and it's overflowing all the time. 
um, because they haven't done anything to really address the root cause, which is the gut. So this person thinks they have just bad genes and they're trying to manage it and just do everything, but they just think they have bad genes. Now this person over here, um, other side of the world, totally different genetics, let's just say, but they also have a small histamine bucket. I even cringe using the term because it just doesn't make sense. But they also um, were given a bad lot in life and they have this small histamine bucket. But they are not a victim and they chose to change their microbiome. They put in all the work. Um, they did the GAPS protocol. They had meat stock. They introduced probiotic foods slowly. They really worked on rebuilding their microbiome. They avoided antibiotics. Um, and by doing that, it stopped this massive flow of things in their histamine bucket because now their gut is not overproducing histamine. It doesn't need to. And now they don't have a ton of bad bacteria and bad back yeast that are overproducing histamine in their gut. So now they only have maybe this little trickle go in. And even though their bucket's small, they're not having a ton of stuff dump in it. And by the way, once they repopulate that gut lining and everything and repopulate their gut with this good bacteria, now their gut can produce its own DAO, which is that enzyme that breaks down histamine. So remember that last person, they had to take it in supplement form because they had bad genetics. Well, this person also has bad genetics, but because they really intentionally, re intentionally repopulated their gut, their gut is now producing its own DAO, which is like poking holes in the bottom. So even though this person may have a small histamine bucket genetically, all this work they've done, they have decreased the amount of histamine going in and they've poked all these holes in the bottom. So this person over here, it's virtually impossible to um, overflow their histamine bucket. They can eat, you know, two liters of sauerkraut and not have a problem because their body is continually producing all that DAO and it's not overproducing the histamine. And then this person over here, they're all happy because they can eat histamine rich foods again. And this person over there just says, oh, you must have good genes. You're so lucky.